have worship service. We need all of our children to go ahead and prepare to be dismissed early for children's service. Good morning, Spirit of Liberty Worship Center, and happy Resurrection Day to you. I Well, thank you, thank you. I heard that to you as well. Listen, my job is to op merely open us up this morning uh, with the scripture and prayer and work welcome all of you that are actually in here today uh, that join us in person, but we're also grateful for all of you that are joining us at home online. And one of the things that I want to ask you to do is this. Do me one quick favor. And, and I want to make sure you understand that what I'm asking you to do, I'm not asking you to do this from a place of being judgmental or critical or anything along those lines. What I want you to do is begin to go on our YouTube uh, page, and I want you to find Spirit of Liberty Worship Center, Charlotte, where you are right now. And what I want to ask you to do is think about that person that's, that's maybe not at worship service this morning. Uh, we don't know whether they're at work. We don't know if they worked last night. We don't know what their circumstances and situations are. But you love them so much until you want to make sure that they at least have the opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ being preached today. And when you send them that link, just say, hey, listen, you are on my mind today. I just want to share this with you. And there again, we're not judging. We're not condemning. We're not acting as if we're better than they are because we're in here and they're not. But we're just letting them know that we love them so much until we want them to hear about the life, the death, and resurrection and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's all we're sharing. That's the only reason why. We're not asking them for, to, to give money or do anything along those lines. We just want to make sure that they have that opportunity to hear the Lord Jesus Christ being preached. So now that I've made my plug, I'm going to do what I've instru been instructed to do. And I'm going to get out of your way so you can hear some awesome worship, uh, music, songs, praise. Uh, and then we can hear the word. And we just have a full day ahead of us. So my scripture today is 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. And this is what it tells us. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. We really want to highlight this part, so make sure you get it. Always being prepared to give an answer to everyone who ask you to give the reason for the hope that they have. But do this with gentleness and with respect. In Spirit of Liberty this morning, I want you to understand this completely. That you are being talked about all over the world today. Because you're here in Spirit of Liberty, or because somebody else is at the Baptist Church down the street, or at the AME Zion Church around the corner, you are being discussed by every religion under the sun. Today, I, I promise you, in, in some Islamic mosque or in every Jewish temple, every Jehovah's Witness hall, and even when you begin to go along the street corners, when you hear people, the black Hebrew Israelites, they're, they're talking about Jesus Christ being born. They talk about him dying. But one thing that they make in their argument is that he didn't raise from the dead. So they think that you're crazy and they think that you're wasting your time by being here today, serving a God in their mind who is still dead. And so the scripture tells us this. We have to know what we believe. And uh, like we have to know it from a faith perspective, but we also need to know what we know about the Lord Jesus Christ from an intellectual perspective. 
when, when the Bible tells us that we have to always be ready to give an answer for the reason that we have in hope and our hope in Jesus Christ. Because we believe and we hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we also have to know. We have to know it in our heart. We have to know it in our mind that because he rose, we are going to also raise, be raised as well from the dead. And, and ladies and gentlemen of Spirit of Liberty, my time is up and we're going to go in prayer. But I want you to understand that the only way you are going to know from an intellectual perspective as well as from a faith perspective about what you believe about the faith that you have placed your, that the hope that you placed your faith in is by reading the word of God, by studying the word of God, by meditating on the word of God, and most importantly, by living the word of God. It's, it's just not going to happen through osmosis. It, because you put the, the, the Bible on the glove compartment of your car, it don't make you saved. It don't give you knowledge of what you believe in. Because you keep it on the nightstand beside your bed, it means nothing in the grand scheme of things when someone asks you for the reason why you have placed your hope in Jesus Christ. I, I'm grateful now. I'm, I'm learning to be super appreciative. When people ask me about why do you go to church on Sunday morning? Why are you in such a hurry to get the Bible study on Wednesday night? Why do you do this and why do you do that? And what we have to understand is that people are not always asking us because they want to be critical. They just want to know. And the, the, the problem we have in the, in the body of Christ is that we might know what we know, but we still might say it with a level of uncertainty. So this, and I'm going to get out of your way and I'm going to pray. From this day forward, know what you know about the Lord of your salvation. The black Hebrew Israelites, they stand on the corner with a bullhorn and they're screaming, they're ye you're yelling and they're chanting about what they believe in. But we're silent because we don't know. When you go to the, the Muslim te um, temples and mosques, they know what they believe in. Even though it's wrong, they know it and they're convinced of it. But we're silent because we're not certain. The Jehovah's Witnesses, they're indoctrinated. They know what they believe. You can ask them any question, and they'll take the same Bible that you read, and they have found a way to turn it in a way that's beneficial for them. But we're silent because we don't know. So I'm going to say this, and we're going to pray. Ladies and gentlemen of Spirit of Liberty, we can't control what goes on at another church. But what we can do is give you the uncompromised whole doctrine is what Pastor Chris says. The full counsel of the word. And we want you to be better so you can know what you believe. And then the Bible tells us that then we can go out and make disciples of all nations. I can't give you what I don't have. But what I do have, what I do know, and what I do believe, and what I am convinced in, is what I can share with you. And that's how the body of Christ grows. So Father, this morning as we come into this awesome time of prayer and this awesome time of worship Father we just come today Lord God to tell you that we thank you Lord for giving your one and only son Jesus Christ to live for us Father to die for us to sacrifice his life for us and Father we are so grateful Lord that he didn't stay in the grave but Father he ascended Father he rose again from the dead and Father your word tells us that he ascended back into heaven and Father, he did just, just didn't ascend back into heaven. But Father, your word tells us that he is now seated at the right hand of the Father and that he is interceding for us. Father, we are grateful that your son, Jesus Christ, is praying for us today, Lord. Father, we're so thankful for your word, Lord God, according to 2 Timothy 2 and 15. It tells us, Father God, even as we begin to read your word and study your word, and Father, to live by your word. It tells us, Father, that we are to do our best to present ourselves as, to God as, as one of God's approved. Father, working, Father, diligently to, to rightly divide the word of truth. And so, Father, we, as we pray your word, Lord God, we're praying, Father, that we would stop walking, Father, in, in a spirit of offense, Lord, when we're asked about our faith. But, Father, we, maybe, Father, we're living our lives in such a way where people are drawn to us and they want to know more about the God of our salvation. Father, when we pray, Lord God, we, as we pray this morning, Lord, as we, as we get the opportunity to share our faith, Father, I pray that you will rise up a confidence in us. Father, to know that we're not giving them feelings and thoughts and emotions, but Father, we are giving them what your word has said after it has been rightly divided. 
Father, we pray now, Lord, over this worship service. We pray, Father, over the praise and worship. We pray, Father, even over the preach word. Father, we know, Lord, that our pastor has heard from you. Father, we know, Lord God, that he is going to speak what you have given him. Father, we believe, Lord God, that he's going to preach with power and with authority and with clarity of speech. And Father, I pray this morning, Lord God, that his preaching would not be in vain. But Father God, this morning his preaching would accomplish all that you have sent your word out to accomplish. Father, I believe today, Lord God, I'm foolish enough to believe today, Father, that today someone will make the decision to claim you as their Lord and as their Savior. Father, I'm just foolish enough to believe, Father, that on this day, Father, someone will begin to trust you, Lord. Father, I believe, Lord God, that even if they don't always, if they don't just completely surrender, Father, I believe that the wheels of their mind will begin to turn to believe that it might be something to this Jesus Christ. Father, I pray this morning, Lord, Father, that you would have your way in every part of the service today and that you would be glorified. Anoint us afresh, Father, to be the people that you called us to be, to do what you called us to do, to say what you have called us to say. And Father, truly it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. It's Resurrection Sunday, y'all. Hallelujah. Are we excited? Hallelujah. Celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Oh, come on. Come on. I don't know what you've come to do. Hallelujah. I don't know what you have come to do. Hallelujah. I know. You might feel like this is always out of tradition. Hallelujah. But the fact of the matter is he came. Hallelujah. He walked this earth. Hallelujah. Out of obedience, he went to the cross. Hallelujah. And in three days, he got up. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Do you believe it in this place? Come on. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. He is King of kings. He is Lord of lords. Hallelujah, he is the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. Come on, hallelujah, he's Alpha and Omega. He is the author and finisher of your faith. He is the hope of glory. Glory to God. His name is Yeshua, a Messiah, Christ, the Messiah. That's who we're celebrating today. Hallelujah. Have you come to celebrate? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory. We thank you. We give you the honor for what you've done, for your plan, God, for our lives. You would send your only begotten son to die for us, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus, to come and redeem us back to you, Lord. Hallelujah, God, we are grateful. Hallelujah, we are thankful, Lord. Woo! Woo! Jesus! Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. For God so loved the world, oh Jesus, that he would give his only begotten son. What does the scripture say that? He who believes he have everlasting life. So I ask you again, what did you come to do? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Be mighty quiet. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. I ask again. Worship is a corporate thing. There's power in unity, people of God. So when we come into the enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, when we do it together, hallelujah, something happens in the room. It's like the Tower of Babel. They couldn't be stopped. We can't be stopped when we're united in worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, when we're united in praise. His presence is 
who's already here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So this song is in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's power in his name. Hallelujah. We're going to celebrate. Hallelujah. Our risen King and Savior. Hallelujah. Y'all ready? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Come on, hallelujah. Can we shabbat God? Hallelujah. The same resurrection power that rose Christ from the dead. The same power in you. We are alive. We are free. Thanks to Christ and what he's done on Calvary. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We are victorious. Hallelujah. And the victory belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. It belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. We are victorious because he overcame. Hallelujah. He overcame this world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We glorify you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for victory. Oh, yes, God. Hallelujah. Victory is ours. We thank you, Lord, that it belongs to you. Hallelujah. The one who sits at the right hand of the Father. Oh, the one who makes intercession on our behalf. Hallelujah, Jesus.
stripes we are healed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's by his nail pierced hands yeah. we're free. Yeah. By his blood we're washed clean. And now we have the
Good morning, Spirit of Liberty. Good morning to each and every one of you that are here with us this morning. You look so, this is a beautiful garden this morning. Y'all look so great. Give yourself a hand. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Good morning to those that are watching from home who are live streaming. We greet you with that Jesus joy this morning. Happy Easter to everyone. Summer camp registration is open. Enroll now um, because the spaces are filling up. If you know someone who's looking for a great place for their children this summer, this is the place. Pastor Charlene would like to send a huge thank you out to the ladies who helped on yesterday at the women's men at the men, women's shelter on yesterday, serving breakfast, cooking breakfast, whatever you did this weekend. From Pastor Charlene, she says, thank you, thank you, thank you for serving on yesterday. Amen. Save the date, men's ministry, Saturday, April 6th at 1230. The men will be meeting at Dorothy Pavilion, 3132 Manchester Drive here in Charlotte. And that's Saturday at 1230 for the men's ministry. We'd like to thank each and every one of you for your tithes, your offering, your givings, whatever it is that you are sowing into this ministry. We say thank you. There are several ways that you can give to this ministry. You can give via Cash App, Givelify, PayPal, by mail, and, of course, here in person. We have bins up front where you can come whenever you feel led, whenever you would like to bring your givings to give. So at this time, we're going to prepare our hearts for our decorations. All right. Have
Heaven is open. Storehouses are unlocked. Miracles are happening. Visions are manifesting. Because I obey him, the Lord blesses everything I put my hand to. He grants me abundant prosperity. He makes me the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. The blessings of God are chasing me and overtaking me. The blessings of God makes me rich and he adds no sorrow to them. Because God loves to see me prosper. I am believing him for better. Release unto us. God ideas. Debts paid off. Blessings and increases financial freedoms and breakthroughs all my needs are met and I abound in every good work I choose to sow cheerfully and generously knowing I will reap bountifully in Jesus name amen this is to the spirit of liberty church family thank you Whether you kept us in your thoughts and prayers, sent a card or flowers, or helped out in any way, we are deeply grateful for your kind expression shown. The family of LaPortia Brantley, being remembered in such a thoughtful way means more than any words can say. And a warm and grateful thanks are sent to you today. Love, KP and Cicely Pittman. Amen. Amen. Just want to say happy Easter to each of you. And again, we welcome all our visitors here with us today. We're so glad you came, stopped by to be with us today. Um, just get prepared for part two of our children after the word. After the word, our children will come back and do a part two. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter. trust in God with this encouragement. God's plan is foolproof for your life. It is good, not an evil to get you to expect it. That's Old Testament. In the New Testament, then Christ came to get you to that expected end. I encourage you to trust in him. You know we face a lot. We go through a lot. But he's with you yeah. every step of the way. He's with you. Trust in the plan that he has for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
They say the old folks say, it may be not when you want it, but it's always on time. And that's so true. Just seek the Lord, because he hears, and he will answer. Just seek the Lord, because he hears, he will answer. Just seek the Lord, because he hears, he will answer. That's why we trust him. That's why we trust him. Just seek the Lord, because he hears, he will answer. Just seek the Lord, because he hears, he will answer. Just seek the Lord, because he hears, he will answer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can we give God another big hand of praise? Come on, we can do better than that. The King of kings and the Lord of lords, the, the all-sufficient one, the great I am, the all-powerful, all-knowing, the sovereign one, the, the one who is and was and is to come, the, the great I am, the Lord of lords, the, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. one who never fails. I say he is the one that never fails, never lost a battle, never lost a case. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We exalt you. We, we extol you in this place. We thank you, God, for another day, Lord God, one that we've never seen before and one that we will never see again. Thank you for the blood running warm in our veins. Thank you that last night, Lord God, you put your hedge of protection around us, oh God, that no hurt, harm, or danger came upon us. Thank you, Father, that, oh God, as we arose this morning, oh God, we had breath in our bodies, oh God. I, we weren't no life support this morning, oh God. We weren't sitting in a in an emergency room this morning, oh God. And even as we drove our vehicles, oh God, we thank you, God, that we avoided accidents, Lord God. And we just glorify you, God, that you allowed us, oh God, to see another day, Lord God. And we don't want to take it for granted, oh Lord God, but we want to praise you while we have a chance. We want to lift you up while we have a chance. We want to raise our voices while we have a chance because we realize that if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, we wouldn't be here today. But thank you, Father, that you're well able. Bless our hearts. Continue, oh God, to be with us throughout this day. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray and believe all these things. Let every heart that say and believe say amen and amen. Come on, put those blessed hands together once again. Hallelujah. It is Resurrection Sunday. This is the day that the church, amen, now can celebrate. Amen. Amen. We serve a God who is well able. Amen. To all of our visitors, amen. We thank God for you being here with us, those that are here, amen, as you can see. Amen. Our children came in full force this morning. Amen. Amen. I don't think nobody stayed in the bed this morning. Amen. Amen. Wouldn't that be a wonderful sight if we could do that every week? Amen. When the children can make sure that the parents get to church. Amen. And the child shall do what? Lead them. Y'all shout a little. And the child shall do what? Lead them. Amen. 
I ain't going to beat you all up too bad. Anybody been here before, you know I could beat you up when I got you in my presence. Amen. But I ain't going to beat you up too bad. Amen. Amen. We're going to look at Romans chapter 8. Amen. Verses 17 through 18. I'm going to read out the New Living Translation. Amen. The New Living Translation. This morning, Romans chapter 8, verse 17 through 18. And it says, and since we are his children, amen, since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share in his glory, we must also share in his suffering. Yet what we suffer now is nothing to be compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. Amen. What we suffer now does not compare to the glory that shall be revealed to us later. I want to talk to you from the thought this morning, trying to explain what should be revealed. Trying to explain what should be revealed. And I know that some of you will be honest with me this morning that you've tried to explain something to some people that just as much as you talked about it, as much as you tried to persuade them and convince them and you show them the facts, you show them the evidence, they just refuse to believe what you say. You, you, you waste a lot of time and a lot of energy trying to explain to people to get them to believe what it is that you are talking about. And you can't explain the resurrection. You, you just can't explain it. It's, it's just in the word of God. It's just biblical truth because the resurrection explains us. And if you just hold on a little bit longer, I'm going to talk to you about it. Just because one can't explain it don't mean it didn't happen. I'm going to say it again for those that's in the very back that ain't listening. Just because one cannot explain it does not mean it didn't happen. Morning times, we, we try to explain the resurrection. And one says that Jesus was in a deep drugged coma, and he just happened to wake up. Someone else said that the disciples were so deep in their grief that they fantasized the whole thing. Many theories out there try to disprove the resurrection. The swoon theory states that Jesus did truly die upon the cross, but he fainted, and in the coolness of the tomb, he revived himself. Then there is the hallucination theory. It states that the disciples were hallucinating about the whole thing. Then there is the theory that the disciples stole the body. And then there is the theory that his appearance was actually a case of mistaken identity. You can't explain the resurrection, but the resurrection explains us. And many people have a difficult time believing that Jesus rose from the dead. And, and this should not come as a surprise to those who do believe because even Jesus' disciples had a difficult time believing that he rose from the dead. Jesus tried weeks in advance to prepare his disciples for his death and he forewarned them of his betrayal and the trial and the crucifixion despite his clear warnings they just could not grasp that their savior the lord the king of kings would die he even writes it in scripture in the gospel of mark chapter 8 verse 31 he says and then he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders the chief priests and the teachers of the law and he must be killed and after three days rise again 
So he said to himself, you know what? I know they don't believe, and I'm not going to just try to explain it to them. I'm going to just show them. I'm going to show him. I'm going to surprise them on the third day. And, he, and, 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 and so the truth of Jesus, it is to be revealed in those of us who do believe. See, the Bible is enough proof for me that the resurrection happened. There were some things that, that there are some things that happened in life that, 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 that some of us, we weren't there to eyewitness it, but we believed it happened. Uh, let's just look around the room. Ain't nobody saying that slavery didn't happen. And I don't think that none of us was there. But yet, because history states that slavery happened, we what? We believe it. So the Bible proves the resurrection. It is the word of God. And scripture says that Jesus Christ spent two nights in a borrowed tomb. And on the third day morning, our Savior rose from the dirt dead. And that settles it. So, so for those that doubt or refute the resurrection of him who was sent for all of us, it's not my job to prove it to you. The resurrection, it happened. And the issue is not what proves the resurrection. The issue is what does the resurrection prove? If we remove the resurrection of Jesus Christ from Christianity, then we don't call ourselves Christians. Because you can't be a Christian without resurrection. Our preaching is in vain without the resurrection. Our faith is null and void without the resurrection. That means all 66 books of the Bible is a lie without the resurrection. My sin that I did on 10 years ago and even on yesterday can't be dealt with according to the word of God if the resurrection didn't happen. That means that death rules and consumes the souls of those who perish without the resurrection. Everything about our Christian faith is a lie without the resurrection. Tell somebody, I ain't trying to explain it to you. I ain't trying to explain it to you. I'm just going to reveal it to you. Therefore, we believe what Scripture says, that Jesus arose from the dead with all power and is now seated on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. And that settles the issue. Tell somebody I ain't arguing with you about it. Because I ain't got nothing to prove. I ain't got nothing to prove to you. Don't come sending me no texts and no email. And if you don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, let me just go and put it out there. Don't show up on Sundays. Because, see, cause see, when we come in here, we come to celebrate. I don't come to celebrate a dead God. I come to celebrate a living God. I come to celebrate a God that still heals, set free, and delivers. I come to celebrate a God who's still able to provide everything that I need. I come to settle a God and celebrate a God that even when I'm at my lowest point, he gives me strength to keep moving and going. I come to celebrate a living Savior. And though sometimes it's hard to explain it from a scientific view, the evidence is clear. The evidence is clear and it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, I need somebody to reveal it. He is a new creation. All things have passed away and behold, all things are new. We have the responsibility to reveal that Jesus lives. Everybody know that he died, but everybody don't know he lived. <laughs> everybody.
everybody can grasp, oh, he did die. You've been beaten that many times and stabbed that many times and nails pierced in your hand and in your feet. Oh, they agree that he died because none of us would have been able to survive what he went through. But they got a problem when we talk about he lives. Oh, but I come to tell somebody the morning he lives. And I'm going to reveal that Jesus lives. Many still deny him, but he lives. And many still reject him, but he still lives. Other people still ignore him. And this is where people really get on my nerves because we don't call on them till we get in trouble. Uh, I, I get more phone calls when you when your people in the hospital and they on life support and they done got the back. You don't call me when everything is up. But as soon as you get down and as soon as you don't know how things are going to come through, that's when you start picking up the phone. I need to call Pastor Chris. I need to get Pastor Chris because I know Pastor Chris get on the prayer call. But if you believe him before you get in trouble, somehow, some way, my God always come through. I need to see the hands of folk that say, I've tried him and I know him. That he always, he always come through. We used to say it like this in the good Baptist church. You can't make me doubt him. Because I know too much. I need to see the hands of folk that know something about my Savior. John teaches us that in the beginning was the word. And the word was God, and the word was God. And all things were made through him and by him and for him, and that in him was life because he was life. Now, let's, I'm just clearing some facts. Only one that has life can give life. Only one that has life can give life. Dead folk ain't reproducing nothing. <laughs> let that sink in your, let that settle in your shot or not. Dead folk are not producing nothing. So we get up and we say, Jesus came to give us what? And he come to give it more abundantly. So if Jesus came to give us life and give it more abundantly, how can a dead God give you life? He must be living. He's got to be living. And so it is completely possible to have had knowledge of the Bible and of the Lord Jesus and still reject him. It is possible to not value him as your personal savior. There are some people even in scripture that tasted of the heavenly gift and they was present when miracles were performed and by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yet they never believed Jesus as savior and Lord. We see this in the person of Judas. You're talking about a man who was called by Jesus and he was spent time with Jesus and he was in close proximity with Jesus and he saw Jesus feed 5,000. He saw Jesus heal the lame and he saw Jesus call the dead to life. But yet at Jesus' last moment, Judas betrayed him and turned his back on him. You can spend time with Jesus and you can have head knowledge of Jesus, but everybody got a Judas in their life. Everybody got somebody that'll turn on you, even though they've spent time with you. And I just come to encourage somebody, don't get rid of your Judas. Because your Judas has a purpose in your life. Tell somebody, don't get rid of your Judas. I know they get on your nerves. I know you be ready to cuss them out. Come on, I know I got some cussing folk in here. Everybody ain't got their they tongue changed yet. I know you got some people. When you get into an accident, you don't call on the name of Jesus. You be like, blah, 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 blah. But 
But everybody got a Judas in their life. And without Judas, you will never know how you really love God. I'm going to say it again. For without a Judas, you really will never know how much you love God. So just as Jesus had eyewitnesses to his death, burial, and resurrection, even people still saw him and didn't recognize him. They didn't believe, Minister Massey, that he lived. He says, but I need some people who will put faith in the word of God. And even when naysayers and when doubters and when, when people try to come up with all type of theory and try to disprove that I'm alive, I need some people that can say, you know what, I know my God lives. I know he lives. I know he got up on that third day morning. I don't have to have another death experience to know that he rose again. He was triumphant. He was victorious. And we are to recall and to reveal that Jesus lived. What does it mean to reveal? It means to make known. Something that has been kept a secret to unveil, to disclose, to show. Specifically to communicate one that had not discovered without divine or supernatural instructions. To uncover, to bring to light, to make plain, to declare, and to make clear. I may can't explain it because even some days, Chris, it don't make sense. Can we just be real? It don't make sense. But the Bible says that that same power that raised Jesus from the dead will also raise us. That same power. And we understand that there is coming a day where we all must meet the Savior. There is coming a day where we all going to have to give an account of our good as well as our bad. There's coming a day when when what you build your life on is either going to survive Or it's going to burn up. That's coming today. I I don't need you to disagree with that. But when that day comes, will you say, I put my trust and hope in the Lord Jesus when I had a chance? Because you do know that everybody in here and out there and over there, they're going to have to come to see Jesus. You're going to see him. He says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. You're going to see him. You might not spend eternity with him, but you're going to see him. You're going to know what he looked like. You're going to be like, man, I sure wish I would have known who he was when I had to change. I heard Pastor Chris preaching on a Sunday morning, and he was talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I remember Pastor Charlene trying to push me to my next place, but I just refused. I just didn't want to believe. I'd rather do things on my own, but now we're all here, and we all have a reason and a moment to believe. To be revealed, to uncover, to bring to light, to make plain, to show. See, on the, on the external, it looked like the one who was to bring hope has now turned into a horror movie. The crucifixion was horrible, y'all. It was Anybody ever seen those movies out there? Because I wasn't there. But if it looked like anything they show, it was horrible. It was horrible. But I don't understand why they keep killing my Jesus. 
If he done died one time, why we got to kill him every week? And then don't get the Good Friday. It really wasn't a Good Friday. I don't know why y'all celebrate Good Friday. It wasn't good. Anybody being executed and crucified, that can't be good. But he says, I need people who will reveal. Reveal that he lives. Everything you survived, it reveals that he lives. Everything you were able to overcome, it reveals that he lives. Every sickness that attacked your body and you made it through, it reveals that he lives. Every time somebody had counted you out and didn't think you were going to make it through, but yet you were still able to get back up, it reveals that he lived. Because there is no other power that could have rescued us and brought us back from the things we survived. I don't care how many doctors you went to see and how many specialists you went to put your business in. Only Jesus could have healed what killed other people. Oh, I think maybe maybe you ain't been through nothing and maybe maybe you ain't survived nothing and maybe all of your family that got sick, maybe the doctors were the one that you counted and said healed them. But I believe I got about 15 people in here that said, if Jesus did step in when he stepped in, I would have lost my loved one. I would have lost my mind. I wouldn't have never made it through. But thanks be unto God who always causes us. And every time I look back over my life and I see how far God has brought me, it reveals that God lives. The attacks that the enemy used to destroy you, but yet you were able to triumph over it. It reveals that only the Lord lives. I know you'd rather give credit to your job, but let me tell you something. Even when the job laid you off and shut down their doors, but yet God provided every one of your needs, it reveals that Jesus lives because he still provides. So though I may can't explain his resurrection, I can reveal that he lives. Though I may can't understand how he came through all that he went through, but it reveals that he lives. And he tells me, if I suffer with him, I'll also have that same glory. So when we look at what Jesus went through, love was revealed on this Resurrection Sunday. He revealed love to all of us. We see love in a painful way. It wasn't the type of love where you do something for me, I'll do something for you. You, you know, that's fickle kind of love. But he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love you even though you ain't done nothing for me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love you even though you ain't loving me back. I'm, I'm going to love you even though I'm taking a risk that you may never return the love that I gave for you. I'm going to love you because I've got a love of people that despise me and that rejected me and that counted me out. But because my love is unconditional, my love reveals that I live. Because I ain't never found a love like this. I'm going to say it again. I have never found. A, you talking about somebody that has been to the pits. Somebody that has been to hell. Somebody had never done what God wanted them to do. But he still loved them. His love reveals that he lives. Not only does his love reveals his live, but hope reveals that he lives. Hope is to expect 
something that you ain't received yet. To expect some beneficial in the future that you ain't seen yet. To wait for something, to have a desire for something or someone. Jesus makes this statement about himself. He says, I am that I am. And we put our hope in the I am. See, as long as I can have a, just a little bit of hope, I don't need much. But just give me a little bit of hope that everything going to be all right. <laughs> Just give me a little bit of hope that tomorrow is going to be better than yesterday. Just give me a little bit of hope that if I lean not to my own understanding and in all my ways and knowledge him, he will direct my path, then I just believe I can hold on just a little while longer. I need some folk to say, I don't have a lot, but I'm just going to hold on just a little while longer. These ain't worked out the way I thought they would, but I'm just going to hold on a little while longer because I just got some hope to believe that everything. Everything going to be all right. Can we just get a little real church in here? Don't scare the person next to you. Just slap them high five and say, everything going to be all right. You, you're looking a little bit sad this morning, but I need you to get some hope this morning that everything going to be all right. That weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning that everything is, is going to be all right. I know it looks bad and it looks bleak and it looks like things ain't going to work out and it looks like you're at the end of your rope. But reach up and tie a new knife and tell yourself that everything. I got hope to believe that everything is going to be all right. So love revealed that he lives. Hope reveals that he lives, but this is my last point. Glory reveals that he lives. He says, and you going to be shared in some glory because you're an heir of God. That means you got an inheritance. Yeah, yeah. Anybody know anything about an inheritance? Anybody ever had somebody that passed away and they left you an inheritance? Oh, look, look, come on now. Y'all ain't got nothing yet? Come on now. Come on, you ain't had no great granddaddy that at least left you a car or something. I need some folk that have experience. Because if you ain't never experienced inheritance, then you don't know what you're waiting on. I need some folk to understand I've got an inheritance coming. That's what glory looks like. That's what glory feels like. It, it feels like something that I ain't had to work hard for, but yet he gave it to me anyway. Something I did not expect, but yet he freely gave it to me anyway. And so glory is revealed. It, it is described of God's full weight of God's nature. Listen at this. All of God's goodness and his faithfulness is, is in his glory. Anytime God is good to you, there's another level of his glory. Oh, has God been good to anybody this week? Come on now. Has, has God been faithful to anybody this week? I know there were some things that you, you didn't think God was going to do, but because of his faithfulness, he says, that's what I'm going to reveal into you. And every time I'm good to you, you got to be good back to him. Every time God shows you his faithfulness, ill response is, God, I'm going to be faithful back to you because I realize that if you've been this good to a wretched soul like me, surely I can give you something in return. So God, he's been good to all of us. And this Resurrection Sunday, he's been even better to us. Look around the room. God's been good. You got family and you got friends sitting next to you. God's been good. You got co-workers and you got loved ones next to you. God has been faithful. His glory is all in the room. You, it's not about a feeling. It's about what you know. 
Some people are going to ask you on tomorrow, what did you do on Easter Sunday? Tell them, I went up and I went to church. I didn't really want to go, but I went anyway. I see your face. I don't read your text. I seen your email. I feel your vibe and your energy. You only here because your boyfriend came in. You didn't know if he's going to find somebody else in the sanctuary, so you'd rather come with him. Come on now. But when you leave here, you're going to say, God's been good to me. We said it like this. He's been better to me than I've. He's been better to me than I've. He's been better to me than I've. Glory is all around us. Not only is it around us, but tell somebody it's in me. Yeah, I got a purpose and a plan. I, I got glory all in me. He just didn't get up for nothing. He got up just for me. He just didn't raise on the third day. He got up just for me. Because when I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, rising to sink no more, but the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry. And from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. Tell somebody he did it just for me. He got up just for me. He rose just for me. He ascended just for me. He came just for me. He delivered me. He set me free. Set my feet on a rock. And I'm now healed again. I'm whole again. I'm free again. Trying to explain what should be revealed. All of us in here, from the front to the back, whether you put your faith in Jesus or not, he's done something for you. Don't look at me like that. Whether you put your hope in Jesus or not, he's done something for all of us. His love and kindness has been with us each and every day. His new mercies, y'all. His new mercies. And because he loved us so much, on this Resurrection Sunday, can somebody just love on him back? That's what worship does. It, it says that I'm loving on him back. Everything that I survived, everything that you survived, is because of the grace of God. No goodness on your own. It's because of the grace of God. Every head bow. If there's someone in here this morning that have not put your hope in Jesus, tomorrow's not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. He just didn't rise to make us feel good in this moment, but he rose so that we could have eternal life. If there's someone in here this morning that have not put their hope in Jesus, if you pray this prayer with me, I promise you there's no magic tricks. But if you say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save my life. Rescue me from myself. Forgive me of all of my sins. God, remove the stain of death from my heart. Jesus, I accept you. I love you. 
and I appreciate you. If you prayed that prayer with me, you are saved. You now have an advocate with the Father. No longer bound, but you are set free. And whom the Son sets free, the Word of God says is free indeed. Come on and put those blessed hands together. We're not going to try to explain the resurrection, but we will reveal it in how we live before our brothers and sisters. We will show love. We will show hope. We will show the glory and the faithfulness and goodness of our God. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to allow our children to prepare. Amen. They got some Easter speeches. Y'all going y'all gonna to help them out? Amen. Y'all going y'all gonna to help y'all baby and boo-boos out, right? Amen. For those that are online, we thank you for joining with us being with us on today. We're going to keep the live stream rolling in case those that are online want to hear those Easter speeches. some first-time visitors, amen, that are with us this morning. If you're a first-time visitor, you've never been in this sanctuary before. If you're a first-time visitor, would you please stand? Amen. First-time visitor. Come on, let's give it up for our first-time visitors. Amen. 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 We thank God, amen, for you being with us today. I'm the head but not the tail above and not beneath. This scripture means to me that I'm not a follower, I'm a leader. <laughs> Happy Easter. Easter egg is hollow, just like they found. The two glory re represent Christ has risen for you. Matthew 2, 28, 16. Let's say it again. The first Easter brought hope.
John 15 and 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and me in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The scripture means to me, without God, you are nothing, but with God, you are strong. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Trust in God and whatever you do and don't be scared. Say yes to the Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, good news, oh, good news. Jesus Christ is alive and he lives in me. Corinthians 13 and 2. If I have the gift of prophecy and faith that can move mountains, but if I do not love, I will have nothing. He rose again on this Easter Sunday. Jesus died for us. Oh, what a fate. He was buried and raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. This season is a time of renewal, hope, and hope when we look to the future with optimism and joy. Easter comes, but once a year, how will you celebrate? Will you keep Jesus on your mind as you clear your plate? Will you find those Easter eggs, those chocolate and jelly beans? And will you stop to think about your almighty heavenly king? Think about what this all means to have beautiful days like this, all because Jesus died upon the cross to cleanse of us of our sin to come that special Sunday he arose from his crucifix all for the love of his fellow people who else will ever do this our one and only Jesus Christ never forgot what he went through to bring this joyous holiday Easter to me and you as we all sit here smiling in great fear from this great Easter Sunday let's not forget why are we here gathered to together to celebrate. Recall all of the pain, pain we went through. Think about the strength it took to rise back from the dead. And now think about everything we have to and everything we have to celebrate. Thank you, Jesus, for this day as we head into our meal. For it is because of him that we all have everything, including each other. Praising for He was buried. He was raised from the dead. On the third day. The scripture says. Happy Easter. Come on, let's give it up again for our children. Come on, I believe that the church is in good hands. Amen. Take Governor all the announcements. We thank you all for being with us on this Resurrection Sunday. We pray that you have been blessed.
We pray that you will spend the rest of the day with family and friends and loved ones, enjoying yourself. Amen. And remember that tomorrow is not promised, y'all. Let's celebrate the Lord Jesus and let's celebrate each other while we have a chance. Amen. And while we have our opportunity. Amen. And remember on this coming Saturday at 1230. Amen. I want to see all of our men. Amen. Invite a brother with you. Amen. To come as men are iron sharpens iron. Amen. So do we count sharpen the counsel of our brother. So we will be there on this coming Saturday at 1230 p.m. Let's stand and look to the Lord for our benediction. your child have a craft, so make sure that you, amen, get your child's craft, amen, as we are exiting the building. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceedingly joy, to the only wise God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now, forth, and forevermore. Let all God's people say amen. Amen. You